how to determine if something is a function or not. Um, <laughs> little thing on Shakespeare there, but this is for unit two assignment four, um, where you are asked to determine whether something is a function or not, and if it is a function, what's its domain and range. So we'll cover all of those topics in this lesson. Okay, what is a function? Okay, a function, basically what we want is when we put in a value for x, we want to know what y is coming out of that function. We don't want to have two different options. Um, okay, so it's like at a fast food place when you say, I want a cheeseburger, um, you don't want to have that be some grab bag that they <laughs> lift something out of and you make it a fish sandwich or a chicken nugget. Okay, you want the cheeseburger. Um, functions you want to know what's coming out. Okay, for that reason, um, functions are defined so that every x has exactly one y value that it's paired with. Okay, so if we look at this, um, you can have a function that has the point 1, 2, and 2, 2, and 3, 2, okay? That is still considered to be a function because when we put in 1, we know we're going to get 2. When we put in 2, we know we're going to get 2. When we put in 3, we're, we know we're going to get 2. It's okay that they all had 2 as their answer, okay? We just don't want to have this case. I'll show you one that's not a function. Um, 1, 4, 1, 7, 1, 3. You cannot have the x value um, repeated. You can have the y value repeated. You cannot have the x value repeated because what happens there is then when we put in a 1, we could get a 4, a 7, or a 3. We want to know exactly what's going to come out of that function, and we plug x's in, the y is what comes out of the function. Okay? And we want it to be diff, we want <clears throat> to, for each x, it has its own pair. It doesn't have multiple numbers like this one, where it could have been 4, 7, or 3 when we plugged in a 1 for x. So, um, how can you tell if it's a, a function of the relation? It depends on how they show that function to you. If they show it to you as a set of points, like these two examples, what you want to look for is to make sure that each x value, here, 3 went to 5, 2 went to negative 4, uh-oh, 3 is also going to negative 4. We have repeated x values here, and that is a no-no with, with functions, okay? So that's what you want to watch for. If they give you a set of points, if the x's are repeated, it's not a function. Look at this next example, 1, 4, 3, 6, 1, 2. Is that going to be a function? Yes or no? And the answer there is also a no. I think I meant to put an example of one that is and one that isn't, but we'll deal with it. Okay, that's also a no because I had one going to 4. I also had one going to 2. That can't happen. Uh, let's write down one that is a function. 0, 1, 3, negative 5, and 6, 4. That's a function. Each of my x values went to, a diff <coughs> went to its own unique y value. Okay? Not to a different, but to its own unique y value. It's okay to repeat y's. You just cannot repeat x's. When you're looking at an equation, I'm going to go ahead and erase here. So if you need to pause, take notes, go ahead and do so, because I'm going to erase what I have on the slide so I have room. Okay? If it's written as an equation, how in the world am I going to tell? Well, there's a few things that can show you. This first one, when I put in an x, how many possible y's am I going to get out? For example, if I put in 3 for my x, how many x, how many y's could I get back? Is there more than one possibility? There isn't, because I go 3 times 2 minus 4, okay, is 2. 
That's the only possibility. No matter what I put in for X, I'm going to take it times 2 and subtract 4. And that will give me a different number every single time. Okay? So this one is a function. These are a little harder to determine because you have to think about what the function means. Um, when you have something like this second function, I want to, first of all, isolate the Y so that I can tell exactly what's happening. Well, isolating means to get Y by itself, and right now it's squared. So how do we get rid of squares if we're talking about isolating the y? Well, we take the square root. And what are we supposed to put when we take the square root? We're supposed to put plus or minus, right? Because when we square something, if it was negative, it makes it positive, and we're not certain. So we have to put the plus or minus there. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x minus 3. This one ends up not being a fu function, and the reason for that is because of this plus or minus. If I put 1 in for x, I get two answers for y. I get the positive square root, and I get the negative square root, and our goal with a function is when I put something in for x, I only want one result for y and nothing else. So this one is not a function. So again, to determine you always want to go ahead and isolate the y before you decide if you get more than one x. When it's written as an equation, those are the tough ones. Um, a graph. If they show you the graph of a function, it is super simple to tell if it is a function or not. What you can do is just take your pencil or pretend, draw vertical lines through the graph. Okay? If at any time your line goes through more than one point, which these do not. Notice they all go through just one point, only touch the graph in one place, is what I'm talking about. Okay, They all touch in just one spot. If they were to touch the graph twice, being a vertical line, that would mean that we have two y values for that x, and it would be a no. Okay? This is a yes. Each vertical line only touched one point. Let's look at the other example we have here. If I were to draw vertical lines through this graph, uh-oh, that one right there, notice, touched two places on the graph. It touched there and there. So that tells me when x is negative 2, y could be 3. It could also be, and I'm just kind of guesstimating because I don't have those, it could also be Oh, it could be 2, and it could also be negative 2. Notice our x's are repeated. We have the x negative 2 ends up could be 2, and it could be negative 2. That's not acceptable. Okay? There are lots of places I could draw vertical lines and touch two spots. So this is absolutely a no. It only has to happen once that you touch two places on the graph of a vertical line, and that disqualifies it as a function. Okay, so when? A recap. How do you tell if it's a function? When they give you a set of points, if any of the x's are repeated, it's a no. If none of the x's are repeated, it's a yes. When you look at an equation, try to isolate the y so that you can tell if anything strange, like a plus or minus, which would happen in this case, um, gives you more than one value for y. Okay? And on a graph draw vertical lines through the graph. If there's any place you can draw a vertical line and touch two places on the graph with that vertical line, it's a no. If you can draw vertical lines and never touch more than one place, it's a yes. Okay? We're going to put some of those skills to work. Okay? Which of the equations below represents y as a function of x? Okay.